Hey there, welcome to Mundane Designs. Today, we're going to start taking the fear out of collecting for the Sega Genesis. Okay, so we are here to demystify the Sega Genesis. Sega! This is the second console that Sega has released in America, and I hate the idea that someone out there could be so intimidated by this system. I fear no man, but that thing, it scares me. That they give up on even playing it or even trying to collect for one. So, we're going to go over a bunch of the hardware variations and uh, what you should look out for, what you shouldn't look out for, um, things that could be concerning, uh, some things that are classic, some things that are not so classic. And, and I'm going to try to get you into a place where you can be comfortable and, and believe that you're not going to be ripped off when purchasing a Sega Genesis. Nice. Sega's first version of the console was mainly just referred to as the V1 body. Um, this is actually a pretty good one. Uh, I, I really like the aesthetics of this console and how it looks. I love the volume slider on it so that you can, you know, plug in some headphones and get some nice stereo sound out of it and stay up way late at night when your parents aren't noticing and play some video games well into the AM and not get caught. Uh, now, as for collecting this one, um, I, I would honestly say that you should probably go for the high-definition one. It's like labeled across the top in an arch. Uh, it has the best audio, and that's mainly the, the huge advantage that the, B, the V1 body has for the Sega Genesis. Uh, it also looks a lot better with the first version of the Sega CD, which, um, you know, I'll, I'll get into that in a later video. Uh, the the V1 body, it's it's actually a good classic look. Um, some people believe the Mega Drive looks a little bit better, but I'm not going to really get into that. So next, Sega came out with the V2 body, but it wasn't as cut and dry as like the V1 body is. There is a difference in the V2s that is very difficult for your normal person to figure out. There's one with a short board, and then there's one with very long motherboard on it. Um, and uh, the larger board overall is considered better on, in the community, and I tend to agree. I have a short board V2 and a long board V2, and it's just a better experience on the long board. Um, I can't really explain that. I mean, maybe a little bit of visuals. Uh, definitely the sound is better. But um, again, you, you can always just take one of the Voltar uh, bypass kits and just take almost any Sega Genesis and turn it from something not so great into absolute gold. Okay, let's make sure these kickbacks are in frame. Looking great. Going to make that money. <laughs> Lastly, they have the three, the V3 body. Um, I really don't like this one. Uh, it's, I don't believe it was really made by Sega. It was uh, a compact version of the console long after the console was expired on, you know, in the market and stuff, and and Sega had actually moved on. Um, there's no expansions are compatible with this thing without modification. I know you can modify this thing pretty heavily uh, and, and actually turn it into something nice, but that's, that's putting a lot of effort into something that's very, very tiny. Now, if you need the room, yeah, you, you can use it. I actually, I think even with the V3 body, you cannot even use the uh, virtual racing game with auto modification as well. And that's just really speaks to the drop in quality between the V2 and the V3 in my mind. Now, we're gonna move on to controllers. 
Uh, there's the classic three button controller with variations on the uh, lettering. Some of the lettering is painted in, some of it's not painted in, some of the lettering is painted white, some of it's painted red. Um, it just basically goes all over the place. It's almost like it's just not been standardized. Uh, then there's the six button controllers and there's actually two six button controllers and surprisingly enough uh, the one that came with the V3 Sega Genesis is actually one of my favorites because it has turbo functionality. Um, and, you know, these, these are actually just really good controllers. They hardly ever break, and you can actually plug them into different systems. You can plug them into the Sega Master System. I think you can even plug some into some of the older Atari systems and stuff and still use them. So it's, it's a very good standardized style controller. And again, there are the arcade sticks as well. Um, these aren't really micro switches. They're just uh, a, a D-pad with a stick sitting on top of it. Um, there's the three button and the six button. Uh, they always come with the, you know, the basic arcade style stick things that were done back in the 16-bit area where you could have like a slow which is basically hitting pause a bunch of times or um, a turbo with any of the three or six buttons uh, i really do love the arcade sticks and mainly just use them for like you playing shmups and a couple of the arcade fighters now on to power power up I really have to say that a lot of the Sega Genesis Power Bricks pretty much hold up on the test of time and don't need maintenance that much. However, if you're going to go for a Sega Genesis with the with all of the trimmings, which means that you're going for the 32X and you're going for the Sega CD, you have to get a Sega Trio. Sega Trio is basically a laptop adapter, uh, that, or a laptop AC that has been adapted to plug into a Genesis, a 32X, and a Sega CD. Or you can actually eliminate one of those, and there's multiple variations of it. Um, you, can, you can basically go to the website and just get order what you need, and I highly, highly suggest it, because no one wants to deal with three wall marks. Um, now, the AV and the power. Uh, depending on which model you get, um, uh, you can go with composite. Um, S-Video is actually very difficult to do unless you modify the uh, 32X to output S-Video. That's a little bit easier, but I won't say that it's easy. Uh, honestly, you need to do the HD Retrovision cables. Uh, they are excellent cables, and I, I, I can't suggest them enough. And then there is the power. Uh, the regular power, like I said, is pretty easy to get. Um, you can even get some aftermarket ones that are kind of okay, but honestly, if you're going to spend the extra money to buy something that's a little bit newer, just go ahead and buy Sega Trio. Um, now, the power, the normal power, uh, is pretty much standardized, except between, um, oh, between all the generations. Uh, you know, if you get a V3 body, look for a V3 power. If you get a V2 body, get a V2 power. Um, V1 body, obviously V1 power. And try not to swap them up or anything like that. Some of them, uh, have different amperages and... Uh, different voltages, I believe, and I believe even one of them, if you do something silly like take one of the Genesis uh, adapters and find out that it fits your Atari Jag, don't do it. it you'll fry your Jag, uh, the polarity is reversed, and the system is not protected against it. So, I hope that all of this information has helped you make a more educated decision on whether or not you want to collect for the Sega Genesis, and that I've helped you remove some of the fear out of collecting for the Sega Genesis. Um, you know, 
please let me know in the comments below whether or not I've helped you with this, or if you're collecting the Sega Genesis, or if you have tips for other people that are looking to get into the Sega Genesis. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.